uh, starting with the Yocto project. Uh, first, who am I? Uh, so I am an embedded Linux engineer at Free Electron. Uh, we do mostly embedded Linux uh, development, consulting, and uh, we also are also teaching uh, some training courses. Uh, so the beginning of uh, those slides are the beginning of our training course. So we have a three, day, three days training course on the uh, Yocto project. And th this will be the beginning of it. Uh, I'm also an open source contributor, so mainly in the kernel. So I'm contributing in the, uh, the ARM support for uh, Atmel. And I've also contributed a bit on uh, the Marvel Berlin uh, processors. Uh, I'm also maintaining uh, the Crystal Forms boards in uh, Meta uh, FSL ARM, uh, which is the, uh, meta uh, the layer for the Freescale boards. So, first, what is Yocto project? Uh, it's, uh, it's not really, um, uh, it doesn't represent any code really. It's just um, an umbrella project that is uh, handling a lot of different projects. So you have a, a pseudo, so pseudo is um, kind of like a fake root, but uh, it's uh, specific to uh, BitBake and Open Embedded and those things. Uh, you have cross press link, uh, Matchbox, uh, OPKG, for example, are maintained by uh, the Yocto project. So, uh, the core components uh, themselves are uh, BitBake. So, BitBake is a build engine. So, uh, it will be kind of like make. So, it's what we call the task scheduler. So, you give a task to uh, BitBake, it will order them. Uh, regarding the dependencies and that kind of stuff, and then it will execute uh, those tasks. You have Open Embedded Core, that is also a, a Yocto project project, but it's also an Open Embedded uh, project project. Uh, so Open Embedded Core is a set uh, of layers, so I will uh, teach you what are layers after. Uh, basically, it's a set of uh, uh, recipes uh, which are including tasks to execute, to create uh, the package, the packages, or uh, to um, uh, to install stuff on your target image or that kind of things. Um, and then you have uh, Pocky, which is uh, the reference system. So Pocky itself uh, will allow you to build a distribution. Uh, so it's more an example than um, a real product. So you shouldn't really use Pocky in your final product. That's something that is not said anywhere, but actually um, uh, Pocky is not Yocto project compliant. So it has some implications, but yeah. So uh, this is uh, the Yocto project. So basically the Yocto project is there, so it includes uh, Pocky. Pocky itself will include uh, open embedded core, so part of uh, when you download Pocky, you are actually also downloading uh, Open Embedded Core, and then it also includes uh, BitBake. It includes a set of scripts that will um, allow you, for example, to flash images or create uh, final images, SD card images, that kind of things. And uh, it also includes uh, a set of layers. So in green, then you have layers, and those layers have recipes, and those recipes will do some stuff. It also includes, uh, so I, like I said, uh, the YouTube project also handles uh, Pseudo and ADT and Matchbox and some kind of projects that are used in embedded uh, Linux that, are, that were not maintained anymore at the time the Yocto project was created. Then you can get uh, a few different layers from other sources. So for example, you can have uh, Meta TI, that will be the uh, Texas Imprimant uh, layer to support Texas Instruments board, CPU and boards. So it will include um, some recipes too. And then you can also get, for example, uh, Meta Qt5 that will just allow you to build Qt5, but it's not part of the Yocto project. So it's a separate layer coming from a separate source. And you can also get your own uh, custom layers that you will create. And I will mostly talk about, okay, let's create our own layer to uh, modify um, 
whatever is coming from uh, the Yocto project to get it to do what we want to do. Right. Yeah. Did you forget about layers provided also by open embedded projects? Uh, yeah, you also have uh, meta open embedded that is also, yeah, it, so it's not on, on that one. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying that open embedded core is also coming from the open embedded project, but you also have another layer that is coming from the open embedded project. So it's meta open embedded. And that one includes a, a set of layers. That's right. Correct me if I'm wrong or something. So uh, the basic organization of uh, open embedded core, you have uh, recipes. Like I said, those recipes will describe um, how to build a binary or to build a package. So you have to fetch the sources. Then you have to configure uh, the build. Then you have to compile. And finally, you will have to package um, the binaries that are generated. And for example, one recipe can generate multiple packages. Because in, uh, with some sources, you can get the binary itself. Then you can get, I don't know, some documentation, the main pages that, will may, that may be in a separate package. Or you can also get some example that are coming with that application that will be, for example, packaged package in a separate package. Uh, then you have uh, that set of layers. So the set of layers are um, including uh, recipes. Uh, and uh, you will use... Yeah. Layers includes also countries. Yeah, I'm talking about that okay. later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in your layer, you can also uh, include configs. And in those configs, you have the machine configurations and that kind of thing. That's true. Uh, by default, so, uh, Open Embedded Core supports ARM, uh, MIPS, PowerPC, x86, and it doesn't support any uh, particular machine. It on, on only supports uh, QMU emulated machines. Right? So the BSPs themselves are not part of uh, Open Embedded Core. Right. So the first thing that you will want to do after downloading uh, Pocky uh, will be to build an image. Right? So you will want to try it, and so you, you will want to build an image. So how to uh, build an image? So you have to, uh, to source a script, and that script will uh, um, uh, set up the environment that will be used for the compilation. Um, why, do you, uh, why do you want to do that? Uh, basically, it will export the path to uh, BitBake, uh, to a set of tools, uh, it will also export uh, for what machine you want to build, uh, where do you want to build. And like we say, uh, all the build is done in a separate uh, build directory. So uh, everything is done out of tree. So your sources will not be touched by the build, right? So it's really easy to, uh, to delete a build. You just uh, delete the build here, and then everything is clean. Um, so uh, OE init builder. The script that you, you source uh, will modify your uh, environment, and that's why you have to source it. Because if you execute it, it will be uh, executed in a subshell, and then you will use your environment once execution is finished. Um, it will allow you to use the commands provided by Pocky, so mainly uh, bit bake, but also a set of scripts. Um, and it will set up uh, a basic build directory. So uh, by default, uh, build here it will be uh, build but you can also name it like you want. So for example, if you want to do multiple builds with different configuration, configuration but with the same set of sources, you will be able to do that by having multiple uh, different uh, build directories. Right. Uh, when you uh, execute it, you will also have, um, it will also print uh, the common targets that you have. So just some examples there, you have uh, common targets is uh, core image minimal, that will be the a really small image that will allow you to boot a device and uh, with a command line and that's all. Then you have a core image SATO that will uh, add SATO support. So this is basically a UI. Uh, it's based uh, on uh, Magicbox, I think, now. Uh, you also have a meta tool chain. You can also generate uh, SDK and that kind of things. Right? You have different targets. So uh, to configure your build, so once you have your build directory, you have in that build directory, you have a conf directory. 
And in that directory, you have two files. You have uh, bblayers.conf and local.conf. So bblayers.conf will allow you to say, OK, I have those layers. I have downloaded those layers. And that's where you will say you will refer to those layers. Okay. So you will have your list of layers in bblayers.conf. And then you have uh, local.conf, where you set uh, your configuration variables uh, for the build. And uh, I saw in a presentation yesterday that you could also use image installs there. And you should not do that, because local.conf should be only a configuration local to your machine, right? Something that um, you, it's not distributed as part of your sources. Okay. So, uh, in local.conf, you, for example, you can um, say, okay, I have so many uh, processors, so I can use uh, so many uh, processes in the parallel build. And uh, for each, um, you can also select uh, the number of build bake threads that you want to run, and I can. You may also configure the machine for which you want to, to build. So, for example, you have BeagleBone or whatever. And you can also select uh, the package format because um, uh, BitBake and Open Embedded will generate packages, right? So it can be in a DEB format, IPK format, or RPM format. So you have configured your build, and now you want to build. Uh, it's quite easy. You just uh, use BitBake. Uh, you can pass some options, but usually you don't. And uh, either the recipe rec name or a target. So the target can be, for example, core image minimal, and it will generate uh, your image. So, and that will do the full build. You will wait at that time. If it goes fast, it means that you have a build failure somewhere, <laughs> right? Uh, the result of your build will be there. So you, everything will be in build uh, TMP, or TMP something. You can also rename that directory. But for simplicity, I would say it's in build TMP. Uh, you can get some build test, uh, statistics. Uh, the important thing is in TMP deploy images, where you will have your uh, final images. So either you have uh, SD card images, or you may have uh, your bootloader and your kernel, and then an image of your uh, root file system that you will be able to flash where you want. You also have a TMP work. That's where all your packages uh, have been compiled. So if you want to find the sources for a particular package, it will be there. And you also have a TMP sysroots with two different sysroots, so th where you have uh, the libraries and header files for your host and the libraries and header files that were used to compile packages for your targets. Right. So quick summary. Uh, it's easy, you download, you source uh, your uh, OE init build all, uh, you configure your local.conf, and then you build bake. And that's it, right? You should have an image after that. So now you have an image. You will probably want to, um, to make modifications there. Uh, you shouldn't. Uh, uh, modify directly the sources that you just downloaded because you just want to make additions or uh, small modification. And if you want to upgrade, for example, Pocket uh, to the next version, if you have modifications there, you will have conflict and that kind of thing. So you don't want to do that. So you will probably want to create your own layer and do everything there. So to create a layer, you have a uh, few choices. Uh, either you create uh, your own uh, layer. So there I say meta machine because I wanted to create a BSP layer, for example, but it can be whatever. Uh, inside, inside that directory, you will have to create one file. It's a conf, uh, layer.conf, and that will configure your layer. And um, uh, I will show you how to do that just after. Or you can also uh, use uh, Yocto layer create or Yocto BSP create that will uh, both uh, create a layer for you. Inside your conf uh, layer.conf, you can you have to put to initialize a few variables. Uh, so you have to add the path to your layer to the BB path. So BB for build bake everywhere. Uh, you have to say, okay, what files are in my layer? So you have to 
uh, tells um, to give the pass to all your uh, recipes. So everything that is BB and BB append will be added. Then you can name your collection. So there I want to create meta crystal fonts. So it will be uh, collections uh, plus equals crystal fonts. That's what you add. You, uh, you give a priority there. And uh, if you want, you can also add some dependencies. So basically my uh, crystal fonts layer is depending on uh, meta FSL arm and meta FSL arm ex uh, extra. Uh, because I'm basically using recipes from there, but you can also depend on, I don't know, uh, meta QT5 or that kind of thing. Right. So uh, the main uh, drawback of having that layer separate from the silicon vendor is that if you want to, if you have customer where you want to distribute your sources, they will have to download that um, layer separately from whatever they got from their silicon vendor. So the configuration itself will be done in uh, bblayers.conf, like I said, and it just, you just have to append uh, the path to your layer in your blayers variable. So bblayers plus equal and your bspd sources and your name to your layer. That will add it to the layer. So that was easy for the layer. So now that you have a new layer, you will want to add uh, recipes there, and that's where you will do the real job. So, uh, you have multiple things that you can do with recipes. Uh, so, they are all named uh, something.bb, and I will talk about that uh, drawing uh, uh, multiple times, uh, because you have uh, recipes that are depending on other recipes that could include other recipes, and that kind of thing. So, oh, you wanted to... You got it? Yes. Yeah, okay. I will, I will get back to it later. So, uh, the basics. Uh, like I said, the recipes uh, are describing how to handle a packet, a particular packet, or multiple packets. And it will just be a set of instructions and what we call tasks that will get executed at some point by uh, Big Data. Uh, you will also define uh, what are the build dependencies or the runtime dependencies, so that it will know, okay, uh, I want to build uh, that package, but it also depends on another package, so it will select uh, that particular package. Right. So uh, the file name for the, your recipe is uh, package name underscore and uh, a version and dot bb. Uh, inside that uh, recipe, you will have uh, also configuration variables uh, in a header, so that will be uh, the name of your package, the license of your package, uh, what is the path to retrieve sources, and that kind of thing. And it has all the tasks. And if you want to uh, run a particular task, you can use uh, bitbeck dash c, uh, name of your task, and uh, the package. Right. So it will only execute one. For example, you want to fetch uh, the sources for your boot, then you will uh, run uh, bitbake dash c fetch uh, u boot. And that will just fetch the sources for your boot, which is easy. You may also encounter some recipes uh, organized like that. So you will have an include file that will get included by the final uh, recipe. And um, it's just a way, for example, of uh, having a common part for multiple recipes and uh, a specific part. For example, if you want to support multiple uBoot versions, you can have a uBoot.inc where you say, okay, I want to, um, I want to build uBoot like that and define your task there. And then you just have one recipe there with all the different versions. So you just say, okay, that version is at, is at that location and that other version is in another recipe. You say, okay, I have that other version that is at another location. Quite simple. So that's exactly what I was saying. Okay. So uh, the header itself um, is like that. So you have uh, some variables that you can define. So description, home page, uh, priority, uh, section, license. I, I will not go further on that because, yeah, you will see that header is uh, always at the top of your uh, recipe. 
the main variable you will want to uh, play with is uh, SRC URI, uh, where you say uh, where is located, where are located your sources, right, for that particular package. So you will say uh, how to retrieve uh, the sources. So it will be mostly uh, HTTP, uh, Git, HTTPS, FTP, uh, even local files, and you can think about uh, SVN and a lot of different ways uh, to retrieve uh, sources. Uh, for the co local files, uh, just know that uh, you have two different um, variables that are also search. Uh, those are files pass and files extra pass. So if you want to add uh, a pass to search for local files, then you will have to add them to those variables. And that can be useful, uh, we'll say, uh, we'll see that a bit afterwards. You can also, uh, you will just, you also have to know that uh, Bitbake will search uh, subfolders that are uh, listed in the other highest variable. And in that variable, you have, for example, uh, your SOC name, uh, your architecture name, your machine name, and that kind of thing. And that allows, for example, to have uh, different folders with uh, the name of your machine, for example, and depending on which machine uh, you are building, you will, uh, Bitbake will automatically select uh, the correct files from the correct folder, right? Which is quite convenient. Uh, also, just know that all the files that are ending in .patch or .diff or uh, that you uh, explicitly uh, reference with apply equals yes uh, will be applied to the sources with patch. And all the patches will be uh, applied in the order they are found in the SRC URI uh, variable. Right. Uh, dependencies, so you can uh, give uh, two different dependencies. You have the build time dependencies and the runtime uh, dependencies. So the build time dependencies will not necessarily be installed uh, in your final image, but the runtime dependencies will be installed, obviously. And uh, it just changed uh, a bit uh, the dependencies, but yeah, I will not go too much in detail. Yeah. So you have a set of, of default tasks that are defined for each um, recipes, and they are usually also defined in classes. So you have, for example, the auto tool class that will define what to do with um, uh, when uh, at configure time and that kind of thing. So basically it will just run uh, dot slash configure. So you have those, all those tasks that are usually defined. Right. If you want to know all the existing tasks for a particular recipe, you can use uh, the uh, list task task. Right. Okay. So how to write a task? Because like I said, uh, the task is really where the job is done. So it's quite easy. Um, you will have uh, to uh, define a task like that and you have uh, multiple actions. And those actions are basically um, uh, command lines, right? So uh, you just define those actions. Uh, you have uh, access to all the internal uh, variables there. So uh, the most important one being uh, D that is a destination directory for your uh, package, for your uh, recipe. And you also have work dir, that is the uh, working directory for your package. That's where all the files are fetched before compiling. Yeah. Oh, you are one thing, just read. I will wait. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you have an example there. So for example, do compile. Uh, in do compile, you will want to uh, just compile. So you call uh, CC, you pass uh, the C flags and the LD flags, and then you just say, okay, I want to create hello, and it's coming from uh, work dir hello, because for example, you only have one file that is hello.c. Uh, to install it, then you just uh, call install. So you create your directory, and then you install uh, install it in uh, bin dir, right? Or for example, you can also uh, use a make file and then you just say, okay, I want to uh, run make, so with OE run make, it will just run make 
in your sources directory, and then just the same, you can install uh, the same way. <coughs> yeah. If you want, you can also add your own task. So you, you define your task, and then you say, okay, I want to add that task. So my task is nk image. I want to add it uh, after do compile, but before do install. And it will just add a new <coughs> task uh, between do compile and do install. Uh, I have an example there, so that's a cool uh, recipe. Yeah. Um, just like earlier, you mentioned that that that's what makes that. That's that, that function is that shell syntax. Task can be written in Python. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you. It's even more work. It's even worse to understand. Yeah. So indeed, so you, you, you were just saying that, okay, I, I'm, I'm saying that it's a shell syntax, but you can also write task in Python if you want, because BitBake is in Python. So if you want, you can uh, write, write task in Python. Uh, yeah, so that's my uh, recipe for Hello World. So like I said, you have the header there, so you just uh, define your variable. The one that is important there is uh, uh, SRC URI, so I just say it's a local file that is hello.c, and I will just compile it with CC. Okay. So, now you know how to write your own recipes. Uh, you may also want to modify or to extend existing recipes. So, you have a mechanism for that. Um, like I said, you should not uh, modify directly uh, recipes in Pocky or in whatever layer you just downloaded, but you will uh, be able to uh, extend them in your own layer, if you want. So, uh, to do that, you will use uh, what we call uh, append files. So those are the .bb append, right, recipes. Uh, <coughs> Uh, you can also, in those, uh, add a task or even append some existing task or even uh, override some existing task if you want. And uh, you, you can use some uh, operators that are uh, append and prepend uh, so to, to assign some values. So, for example, like uh, there, you, have, you, add, so you add Pocky with the init if up down uh, recipe. You had uh, meta TI with that uh, U-boot uh, recipe, and you even have that include. You have multiple things that you can do in your own layer there. You can um, uh, append that recipe, so with a BB append, or you can also uh, create your own recipe that will directly include U-boot TI.inc, for example, or you can also append uh, some stuff to that uh, recipe. So you have uh, three different ways um, to extend uh, an existing recipe. So, like I said, extensions are ending in uh, BB append. Uh, you must have the same name uh, in the BB append and the, the original uh, .bb recipe. Uh, what you can do also is that instead of the version there, you can also use percent and it will just match all the versions. Right. So like I said, the append files are version uh, specific or not if you are using the percents, but that's usually that. If you want to add new files, then you will have to uh, explicitly uh, prepend um, the file extra pass variable. And I have an example for that afterwards. And um, everything will be uh, looked uh, in those paths from left to right. That's why you have to prepend. If you append, then you will still be using the previous files. So you want to use the new files. Uh, so, for example, that will be uh, an append file for Hello World, and you just say, okay, I want to prepend uh, my current directory and files, and that will just um, add uh, those uh, patches, for example, that are present in that directory. And then it will patch uh, your hello.c, and then it will still use the previous do compile and do install uh, task that were in the initial BB file. 
just a small warning, you will find that in Poppy uh, it's really not good practice. So uh, you may find some tasks that are doing that kind of thing. Uh, they are basically doing that to understand whether or not they are running on the final target. Um, if you do that, uh, it will exit at that point, but obviously you will not be able to um, append anything to that task because basically it will just exit there and everything you append will be appending there, so it will not be executed. So it may be still a bit blurry for you, but uh, if, you, if you work a bit with uh, append files, you will try to remember that. Don't use that construct. So uh, debugging recipes, so if your recipe is not working, you have a multiple way. So everything uh, for each task, you have a lot of logs, uh, different logs that are in uh, the temp directory in your work folder for your recipe. Uh, you also can use a development shell, so with a big bake uh, dash c dev shell for one particular recipe. It will export everything, every uh, all the environment that was used to compile your recipe, so you can just use make or whatever there, and it will, uh, it will just have the same environment. And usually, you will be able to reproduce the same compilation error. Uh, you can also uh, try to uh, activate the uh, build history with uh, that configuration in local.conf uh, that will uh, show you uh, what a particular modification in a recipe will do to the whole build, right? Mm -hmm. And it's actually, um, it's actually a Git repository. It will create a Git repository, and each commit will be a different build. So you will be able to, to get the diff between each build. Right. So now you are able to uh, create your own recipe, and uh, you want to add uh, the final created package to your image, for example, or to add anything to your image. And for that, you can modify uh, image recipe, right? So uh, the image recipe is just a simple recipe that is in, uh, defining whatever will be included in a particular full file system image. So it's usually the entry point of the build. That's usually what you are using. So for example, core image minimal that I referred to at the beginning of the build is, um, is one uh, image recipe. Right. Usually they are stored in recipes, something images. So that may not be the case, but that's usually the case. And uh, you have an example there. So that one I, I wrote. Uh, so you just give a description, a license, and then you use that uh, image, image install uh, variable and you just append whatever you want to install there. So you have the package group core boot. Uh, it will just usually include uh, a bootloader, the kernel, uh, a C library, uh, a busybox, and that kind of things. And then you can add uh, more stuff like uh, init if of done, uh, busybox uh, UGHTTB, uh, IW for uh, wireless, for example, easy test and that kind of thing, uh, whatever you want to install, right? You can also uh, select uh, what kind of uh, localization is included with uh, image linguas. And uh, there I just say, okay, I don't want any localization, so I want just to create the smallest image uh, possible. And finally, you just inherit a core image that is a base class for images. So it will, uh, that's the one that will parse uh, that variable and install all the dependencies. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's basically what I was saying. Yep. Okay. You can also have a more complex um, image. Uh, that's another recipe and where you will uh, include another recipe image and that will allow you to extend it. So basically I'm using uh, Sato and on Sato, I will add, uh, for example, the debug tweaks. I will add a few uh, packages. I can say, okay, I want some uh, uh, different features, so like the NFS server and those kind of things. Yep. 
Yeah, you can do that. Uh, I don't know if I have it somewhere. I think not. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, basically, you you will use uh, image install underscore remove, and then you say what what package you want to remove. Okay, that that's the way to remove uh, something from a variable. Is uh, you just put underscore remove, and it will remove whatever so is there. So it will be image in underscore install underscore remove. Yeah, that will remove a package. I see you taking pictures, but all the sites are available, so at some point you will be able to download them. Uh, yep, okay. Uh, so uh, you saw that I used uh, image features, so for some features you have, uh, instead of using image install, you can use image features, and for example, for the NFS server, it will automatically install uh, the uh, NFS uh, server and uh, some configuration and everything. So. For you have uh, a few features that are automatically on handled like that. Right. So you also have, uh, if you want to uh, tweak your image, you have a few mechanisms. So like I said, you have, uh, for example, you have the form factor recipe. It's always uh, version 0.0, .0 because it's just a few configuration files. And uh, in that, uh, recipe, you will want to install a Mac config uh, file for your particular uh, product or board or whatever. Uh, and usually what you do is just, you, cr you create your form factor, you do a form factor uh, .bb append. In that uh, recipe, you just use a file extra pass prepend to add your current uh, directory, right? So that will add uh, that one the form factor here. And inside uh, that one, I create uh, different uh, folders with the machine name. So if I'm building for CFA uh, 157 or C, uh, it will use that one. If I'm building for CFA 158, it will use uh, that file, right? It will automatically do that because of the override variable that I talked about earlier. So uh, in that Mac config, you can just have a few variables. So half touchscreen, uh, half keyboard. Uh, you can also use your keyboard for in portrait mode, in landscape mode. Uh, you can also select uh, whether your uh, screen is able to rotate or its orientation, that kind of thing, right? So this will allow you to have something, uh, for example, one image where the only different uh, file will be uh, that uh, Mac config file, and uh, you will be able to run that same image on different uh, machines. Because each machine will say, okay, I have that display width, so you can display on, I don't know, uh, 1024 by uh, 70, uh, uh, 720, or I have only uh, 640 by uh, 480, that kind of thing. So uh, if you want to add extra files or extra configurations, that's the usual stuff that uh, you will want to, to do. You can just create a recipe to install uh, all your configuration files. So you just create a new recipe. Uh, then uh, you just select whatever files you have that you, you, yeah, that you put with your recipe, and then just install them at the correct location. Right. So that will just copy uh, those files to those locations. Quite simple. I also have some uh, useful uh, common, let's say, uh, package tweaks. So uh, you can extend uh, the conman uh, recipe to install a conman uh, dot default. So you will uh, use a bb append uh, like that. And it will just, okay, if I'm using uh, uh, their uh, uh, sys5 init instead of systemd, uh, I will just uh, install the conman default, but if I'm using uh, systemd, I will not install it. We were not using systemd. Right. Um, and in that command default, for example, you will exclude some interfaces because uh, basically we had a USB zero that, that was set up at uh, boot time, 
And when Kahneman uh, started, it will just uh, try to do DHCP on it. And so it, we were not able to connect to it anymore. So I'm just excluding uh, USB zero from Kahneman. Uh, so another uh, package tweak uh, can be for uh, BuzzyBox. For example, I wanted to run uh, DHCP server on USB zero. And uh, I just wanted to configure it. So I'm just adding the uh, uh, udhcpd.conf uh, to uh, the append file for uh, BuzzyBox. Uh, udhcpd is coming from BuzzyBox, so that's fine. Uh, then uh, you can also want to uh, change uh, splash screen because by default you will have uh, Yocto project splash screen. Uh, if you want to change it, uh, you can do something like that. So I know it's quite small, but just have a look at uh, a PDF yourself. Um, it's quite easy. You just uh, the usual stuff. So you have your uh, PNG. From your PNG, you create uh, the header file. Uh, and that will um, be included in the build for you. Okay. So, okay, I'm quite short in time, but uh, like I said, uh, so everything there will help you to uh, tweak your image for your particular product, but uh, you may not base uh, your product on an existing board, so if you have your own board, you will obviously have to do um, your BSP and to include your BSP in uh, Yocto project, in the Yocto project, so in your layer, and you will create a BSP layer for that. So I will quickly quickly talk about it. Um, you will have to create a machine.conf, so the machine.conf will be uh, your machine name, okay? And you put it in your layer in a conf machine, and uh, if you want, you can also create some input files there that will be included from um, your conf files. And I have an example of uh, an include file or a conf file. So basically, uh, I'm, I want to support um, an i.mx28 board. Uh, so it's a Freescale one. It's uh, based on uh, MXS. So I'm included, including MXS base. Then. I'm uh, defining uh, the SOC family, so it's MXS, uh, particularly uh, MX28, and actually it's also a CFA 136. So that, that was the board I was uh, trying to support at that time. So uh, you can select a particular uh, kernel there, uh, which is uh, Linux CFA, so that will be my own uh, Linux recipes, that is named Linux CFA. I will talk a bit about that a bit more later. Uh, you can select uh, your uh, bootloader, for example. You will say, okay, the configuration for uh, my um, bootlet is as that name. I want to create Z image instead of your U image. Uh, I have a device tree, and that's the one. So those variables will be used by your um, by the recipes afterward. Uh, for that particular machine, I want to always include uh, the kernel image and the kernel device tree inside the final uh, root file system image. So I'm adding them there. Uh, I want to create an SD card, a final SD card with uh, the X3 uh, file system. So that's where I'm doing that. And I will create those uh, uh, file system images. So I will create a star. Uh, DZQ, I will create an X3 image, uh, I will create um, a bare box MXS boot SD card, and finally I will create the final SD card image. Right. You can also select uh, your uh, serial console, you can add a few uh, machine features, for example, USB gadget, USB host, uh, there be fat, you also have Wi Fi, that kind of thing. That will, uh, those, that variable will uh, tweak a few uh, recipes to add support for your uh, features. So if you want to include uh, that, you can use uh, include and your uh, pass to your include file. Right. 
Um, if you want to extend those, you can just include them and then change, for example, my device tree is from another machine, or uh, that one particular one has a touch screen. Okay. Uh, so you just add uh, your touch screen there. So uh, for the kernel support, you have multiple choices. So either you will add patches over uh, an already existing uh, silicon vendor kernel tree. So you can uh, do that uh, either as an include or using a BD append. Uh, you can also use your own custom uh, git tree or you can also use uh, the mainline git. And for all those different um, choice, uh, you will want to use a different uh, particular recipe. So, usually for the kernel, you will use um, uh, something coming from your silicon vendor. So you will create your uh, recipes kernel Linux uh, directory. There you will want to uh, write your new recipe for your own kernel, so Linux uh, something, so vendor. It will be CFA, for example, for my exam. And underscore and the version name. You copy your patches uh, to your uh, uh, directory, so your Linux directory. So that will be, for example, for Kongatech. So Kongatech is a module manufacturer. Uh, they have you, their, uh, they have their uh, recipe there, and they have one directory with a few um, patches that are going over the uh, Freescale uh, sources. So what they are doing uh, then is just Okay, I want to include the uh, Linux uh, i.nx uh, include file. That's the one that is containing all the tasks needed to create a kernel for a Freescale board. And then they just are adding um, uh, the uh, source revision. Uh, they are adding a local version there. Uh, they are selecting the correct branch and then they are just uh, adding all their patches there. So it's a huge list of patches that uh, are adding over the Freescale um, um, kernel. So. You can also use uh, the compatible machine. So that is used just to ensure that that particular um, recipe will only be used when compiling for that particular machine. Right. So it will restrict that recipe to one machine or one family of machines. Right. So uh, yeah, I will skip that one. Um, so I already talked about that. So basically when uh, using uh, local files in SRC URI, um, Open Embedded will use, uh, will search uh, files pass. And by default, uh, files pass is uh, BPN. So that's the base recipe name. And also BPN uh, dash uh, PV. So that's uh, the recipe name dash uh, the recipe version. So if you have a look there, the recipe name is uh, Linux dash Kongatech. And the there you have an underscore and this is a version. And the uh, directory name itself is Linux dash Kongatech. -kong 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 and then you have a dash and the version. So this is underscore and this is a dash. That can be uh, confusing at times. Uh, it will also look in subdirectories uh, name machine, uh, and you can override uh, override everything with machine override and disk override. So uh, the other way of supporting your own Linux um, kernel is just to uh, use your uh, custom Git tree, and there you will want to write your own recipe. Uh, and it's not necessarily difficult because you have a lot of uh, classes or uh, uh, recipe include uh, to help you there. So if you are using dev device tree, you will just uh, include uh, Linux dash DTD. You just have to define SRC URI. You always have to define S, that is uh, the path to the source file. Uh, and uh, you can define the compatible machine, like I said. So it will look like that. So that can be quite easy. You just say, I want to inherit the kernel class. I will require uh, DTB just to uh, also handle my device tree. And uh, my sources are there, so it's uh, 
on Git, at that, uh, on that uh, GitHub um, uh, repository, on that branch, and uh, this is the uh, revision that will be used. Right. Usually when you are using Git, S will always be work dir slash git, and it just means that uh, your git uh, repository will be cloned in uh, work dir slash git. Okay. So uh, you also have a few options for the boost header support that I will skip uh, now. But uh, yep, that's it. Uh, you have more documentations uh, there, so you can get documentation uh, for the Yocto project. Uh, the most interesting one, uh, the most in interesting part is the uh, variable glossary, where you have a list of all the variables you can uh, use and what they are doing. So this is really interesting. Uh, you also have the BSP developers guide if you are uh, trying to uh, to create your own BSP layer. And uh, I mostly use the uh, Freescale BSP and uh, that one also has uh, a lot of documentation. Uh, so last thing, uh, like I said at the beginning, we teach a three-day course, courses uh, on Yocto project and open embedded development. So we do that either at your company site or you can also come to our public sessions uh, next sessions are in uh, March in Lyon. I will teach it in French. And uh, the, the other one will be uh, in May in Paris. It will be teach in English. And I guess it will be Antoine. I don't know where he is. Yeah, he's over there. Okay. Uh, if you want, um, all, those, all those slides will be available on our website. But the, uh, the full slides and materials for our trainings are also av available for free on our website. So if you want to have a look at our three-day course, you can get that on our website. More info at training. And if you have any questions, yeah. Okay, no, qu no questions. I was long enough. Thank you.